So this is the build of Puffing Billy, which is our local tourist railway, a steam, ra steam train in Melbourne. So the Trestle Bridge here is, is out of Belgrave is one of the most iconic parts of the, of the line. And this was, uh, the bridge there was built in 1900 and still there today with trains going over it every day of the year. So all the, the locomotives are a Baldwin locomotive. So the first couple came out from America and the Baldwin works and then the rest were built locally by the Victorian Railways to the Baldwin design. Um, we've got uh, six of those locomotives, sorry, five of those locomotives that are in service uh, and a sixth one that's in part in sort of in the smallish bits uh, and also a, cup, a Garrett locomotive uh, and another one uh, that's being restored at the moment. Uh, so I actually work up there as a volunteer uh, on the locomotives. Well, that's fantastic. So I'm sure as a volunteer you see pro a lot of tourists coming on the, the train on a regular basis. So we're getting about 500,000 passengers a year now wow. going through the railway, so it's very busy up there. Uh, we've got sort of three trains, uh, three or four trains every day of the year. So if you're coming to Melbourne, this is the thing to do. You've got to take the train. <laughs> Definitely a thing to do. Not that I'd be biased in any way. <laughs> exactly. So then if you want to dive into the, the train model itself a little more and talk about some of the, the cars we have there. Uh, yeah, so the, um, these excursion carriages, uh, so we've got the open excursion carriages, which are very popular. Um, actually, until a year ago, you could still actually sit on the sides of the carriages and hang your legs out the sides, which unfortunately uh, is suspended at the moment. Uh, for safety reasons, we're hoping to uh, res hoping we may be able to, to res resume doing that in the future. Uh, so those carriages have been running since the 1920s, uh, and then some of the carriages at the back there, the closed carriages, they, those date from 1900. Um, so it's a narrow gauge line, so it's two foot six inch gauge. So modelling that in Lego, the tracks four studs apart, uh, is you know set four studs as opposed to normal six studs. The standard Lego. Um, so this is actually part of a larger display that uh, three of us put together. Uh, so we've got, um, so we can actually run the train. There's, I've uh, got some motorised carriages. The locomotives being being a bit too small to actually fit a motor inside the locomotive. Uh, have a mo mo two motorised carriages and a um, and a motorised and a battery carriage as well. You can see a video example of the train running on the, the full layout here, is that what it is? Yeah, so that's a video from when we've had it at one of the other shows with a uh, larger setup. So I've got some level crossings that work, and a turntable, <laughs> and the bridge of course, and a station. So then, for this display here, one, one thing that I think uh, captures the eye apart from the bridge and the train is obviously the landscape. So you can talk about kind of how you achieved the, the slopes and the hills and then also the tree design and what you went for there. Yes, yeah, so there's, there's three of us predominantly that worked on the landscaping. I built the train uh, and then Tonus who's standing here, he, he had uh, said how about we do a complete, land, uh, complete um, layout for, to run it on. So he came up with the idea of the straight curves. So um, may have seen on the big train like the regular train layouts a lot of people doing grand curves using sections of a straight track to create a gentler curve so i've adopted a similar system here we're using a little uh, pin piece to uh, to fill in the gap uh, so a little, a little bit rough you get a bit of a rocking on the as it goes over which is not entirely unprototypical uh you know branch a rough, rough branch line track um, so, uh, what else do we need to say? And then you've got on this side, you've got the, the road over here as well, which is some great kind of studs not on top, kind of sideways building. Yep. So this is all Tonus's work for the road. Uh, he's really into the brick built roads there and some clever work with the tile, getting the tiling and the uh, and slopes to uh, get the different angles in there. When we were building the bridge, we uh, basically started off with actually building the bridge itself. Uh, and then put it up on, on piles of bricks initially and then sort of worked out the contours underneath and then started building up the ground underneath to meet, the, um, to meet where the bridge piles would actually be.
the second time when we showed this at Brickvention, um, as we were packing it up and I brought it back to my house, um, the table rack that we stored the whole lot in had actually collapsed and all those six tables on top had come down and smashed the bridge. So this bridge has actually been rebuilt from our first version because our first version um, curved back here and wasn't te technically accurate, accurate to the proper scale of the bridge. So that was when I talked to Alexander about rebuilding the bridge to the proper curve and um, we then had to make the 16 wide sections to go across the front which then breaks our modular three by six boundary but we had to sort of make the compromise so yeah yeah so and this it's, is kind of a, a work in progress then it's been yeah, updated yeah, yeah. We'd actually, we actually we ha have plans but it hasn't come in, into fruition yet um, to make um, a model of Emerald Railway Station as well so we've actually got more yard to store more trains at the back and possibly then be able to do two trains running at once in opposite directions but making it a bit crazy and etc etc yeah but it, we'll, we'll get there in time so yeah sure. mm -hmm. actually if you go over to the, uh, to the right a bit you can see some of the other small locomotives that we've got on the railway so we've got a couple well we've actually we've got some really big ones we've got these big diesel locomotives that came from Queensland that were used on total fireband days when it's not safe to operate the steam locomotives and then we've got a Thomas that, we, that comes out on Thomas tank engine days and is very popular with the kids and then next to it is a little green locomotive and that is actually the locomotive that plays Thomas so that Thomas shell actually in the real locomotive the blue Thomas shell fits over the top of the green locomotive and turns into Thomas except it's got the wrong number of wheels because it's an onion 040 and it's amazing how many kids come up and say, that can't be Thomas, it's got the wrong number of wheels. Then we've got the yellow locomotive there, which is a, a little uh, Deckerville locomotive that worked, um, I think Deckerville Coll Collet, that worked at uh, the gas works uh, at West Melbourne originally, before coming to Puffing Billy. And also its sister, the red locomotive at the front, which were originally identical before someone did a very substantial rebuild and turned to much more of a Wild West American outline locomotive. Mm -hmm. And there's another of the Puffing Billy Baldons there and also a smaller diesel that we mainly use for shunting. Yeah, so really nice variety of work here then as well. So I think it, it, the, all the models are very detailed and look great. So thank you.